Hey guys and welcome to my pre-review on Assassin's Creed Unity. Now before we get started I just want to clear some stuff up. My pre-reviews are basically a sum up of all the information that we've heard about the game so far and then me just giving a little rating about how excited we should be about purchasing this game when it comes out. So none of my ratings are based on my experience of actually playing the game. Just thought I'd clear that up for people who weren't sure if I had played the game already or not. So, now that's cleared up, let's get on with the pre-review. Now, Assassin's Creed Unity is coming to all next-gen consoles, uh, so it won't be coming to PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, but don't despair, guys, because you do have Assassin's Creed Rogue to play. Assassin's Creed Unity has... Um, so many different editions. We have obviously the base game, uh, which for the console owners would be about £45, and for PC owners about £40. There's not much difference there in price. But then we have loads of other editions, so let's just go through those. We have the Notre Dame edition, which basically means you get a statue holding the French flag of obviously the main character. Art books, you get a cool box in the style of Notre Dame. Check out the picture. Uh, we've then got the Guillotine Special Edition, which looks awesome. In this one, you get a statue with the guillotine in the background, so it's a different kind of version of the little model you can get of the main character. You also get a music box, tarot cards, you name it. It's quite a lot in that collector's edition. So if you love the franchise, and you like the collectibles, I would say go for that one if you can get your hands on it. Amazon are also doing a special edition where you get the game, free DLC content, and you get a watch, like a pocket watch in the style of the main characters in Assassin's Creed Unity. How cool is that? So, if you don't want a statue because, hey, you've run out of space to put them and they take too long to dust, why not get a pocket watch instead? Because that seems pretty cool. You also have the Bastille edition which is kind of the cheaper version just an extra 10 pound really so about 55 50 pound um and in this one you just get a steelbook case you get two lithographs an art book the soundtrack and two more missions in the game so that's basically the edition for those people who don't want a model or a pocket watch you've got the bastille edition you've also got the gold edition which is the digital edition uh, which gives you the soundtrack and all that kind of stuff but in the digital format. Gold Edition will also give you a season pass so for those digital lovers you get the season pass in that edition and the season pass has loads of stuff in it. You obviously get the DLC which is lined up, the Chemical Revolution mission. You also get the expansion which is called Dead Kings which is apparently going to be the grittiest story yet that Ubisoft has told in the Assassin's Creed series. And that's basically when you go down beneath the depths of Paris and explore the sewers and the tunnels and you meet people called raiders and it's all quite dark. And you get obviously loads of new guns and stuff in that expansion. You also get the other expansion which is when you get to play as a female assassin in feudal China. And you go around, obviously, assassinating people, but they've done it in a different kind of art style to, obviously, the other Assassin's Creed games. So it's almost like a platform side-scroller with really, really nice kind of graphics because you've got that new inventive artwork there. So you get quite a lot in the season pass. The game is set to be released on the 11th of the 11th. So Assassin's Creed fans, get ready because it's going to be upon us pretty soon. So without further ado, let's head on to the story. So, Assassin's Creed Unity is the seventh instalment in this series, and from what we know so far, we are playing the assassin Arno Dorian, who becomes an assassin because he witnesses his father being murdered, and then he witnesses his adoptive father being murdered, and he feels some sort of responsibility to those deaths, so he joins the assassin order to kind of uh, revenge, redemption, just find out what's going on, why all his fathers have been murdered. Uh, and the story basically follows Arno during the French Revolution, 
which is obviously when everyone went a bit crazy and started beheading people with guillotines. So it seems like a very bloodthirsty period of time. And you basically follow Arno and he is trying to uncover the true powers behind the French Revolution, which of course is going to be the Templars, who else could it be? So it's also it's just about Arno on this journey. And that's kind of the premise, you know, fighting the Templars as you do. Um, and obviously we're going to find out who killed all his fathers. But I have heard that his adoptive father was actually a Templar, which is quite interesting that he then goes to the assassins after his father. Well, his adoptive father is murdered. Why did he not go to the Templars? Surely the assassins killed his father. But, ooh, mystery there. But either way, Arno, unlike the previous assassins, does have, he has a very strong love interest called Elise. And she is actually his adoptive sister, so she's the daughter of the guy who adopted him after his original father died. So she is a Templar, technically, if you think about it. But her story is that her father was murdered, she wants revenge, and she won't stop at anything until she finds out the murder of her father. So that's where Arno and Elise kind of come apart, and there could be some kind of romantic conflict there between their two goals. So I'm looking forward to that, because after Connor he was kind of a bit of a stale assassin with no kind of emotion. He was very 2D. I'm looking forward to actually have an assassin who has a life, you know? And that's what we know about the story in the past. So we're basically just going through the French Revolution. And I'm looking forward to this because the people who make the game, Ubisoft, they are a French-based company and they're kind of French. So they should know this better than anyone. And I can't wait to see them explore their history with us in this game and the fact that they've rebuilt Paris in that time is just phenomenal, especially Notre Dame. Um, as for the story in modern day, Assassin's Creed always has a modern day parallel with the past. Um, the developer said that you will not be at Obstergo Entertainment like you were in Black Flag. Instead, you play yourself as someone who's been hired by the assassins to relive Arno's memories and help them out against the Templars. So that's cool, players get to play themselves and not a random person. Um, but other than that, I don't really know, the story's kind of in shadow. But I will show you this little clip which has just been teased recently because what is going on here? This will lead into something to do with the story. And from what I can gather, Arno's French Revolution world is not consistent and is going to collapse at some point, but where does that leave the main character? Where do we get to go? So I'll just leave you with this clip, which I think will add a lot of bulk to the story and has my head spinning in all different directions of where Assassin's Creed will lead us. Assassin, watch out. The French Revolution simulation is collapsing. I don't know what time period you're landing, but you need to get out of there. Run! So what do you guys think of that time kind of splitting video? Please let me know in your comments down below because I really don't know where the story could be going here. The world's never collapsed in such a way where the actual assassin ends up in a different time era. What? Yes, Ubisoft bringing in something new. Uh, let's talk about those new gameplay features which we're all excited about because how does Ubisoft keep reinventing this game that has gone on for seven titles already? Let's get going with those new features. Now the developers have said that the counter button will be going away in this game and guards will become a lot harder. So that makes our battles with them more exciting because we have to parry and dodge and actually time our movements instead of just going counter, 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 because who else just stood there and countered all the time? Me. Because it was easy, but now we actually will have that sense of sword fighting and being engaged in the game. So that's a good new feature that they've added here. Better combat, which has kind of been needed for a while, I think. 
The game has also said that we're going to have more fluid assassinations and we'll be able to free roam faster and ascend and descend faster. Because once you climbed up somewhere, if you couldn't jump into a haystack, it was a very difficult and slow way down or you know your assassin would just jump off and kill himself but apparently in this game even if there is no hate stack the you know assassin will make his way down and it will all be hunky dory so yay faster descent that's something new the game's map will also consist of seven different districts which are all very lively and have their own different characters in them with npcs kind of going about their business doing their own thing so you'll always know when you've entered a different district in the game because they're very dense and they've got their own personality. The game will also offers massive exteriors, but also interiors. Now we kind of saw interiors being brought in in Black Flag and Assassin's Creed 3, but now they're really bringing in interiors. Instead of just jumping through windows to get away from guards, in this game you'll actually be able to go through windows, walk through buildings, and then leave out the other side. So we've got more exploration here, and no loading screens either just to go inside of buildings. So that's pretty cool. They're really fleshing out this world, making it feel more realistic. And that is a feature I've been waiting for for ages, to be able to just walk in and out the city as though it's a city and not just buildings which you climb on top of, because who does that? Assassin's Creed has also added in new side quests which contain murder mysteries, woo, because apparently Arno is also Sherlock Holmes in this game. So you will go around and see people have been murdered in their homes, and Arno can pick up those traces and basically find the murderer. Obviously there will be rewards if you do, so murder mysteries, that sounds fun, in the revolution where people are just getting beheaded anyway. Okay, also the contract systems in Assassin's Creed Unity have been changed. So instead of just getting a pigeon from a box and being like, oh, I need to assassinate him, and then just going to assassinate them, Assassin's Creed Unity have changed these contract missions into Paris stories, which are fully fledged stories with their own characters and developments. So you have different stages to these Paris stories, and they'll be like proper slide quests, and you know, they'll actually have. The progression of story from A to B, so I won't just be like, hey Arno, you need to go kill this person. I'll be like, oh, let's just go explore this and talk to them and then go kill someone, I guess. So that's nice because the contract systems are always quite tedious and boring. It was always, oh, now I've got to do this and I've got to do that, and it's always the same thing over and over again. Talking about the same thing over and over again, and quests that you probably could not stand in Assassin's Creed are those quests where you have to follow someone and eavesdrop on them. Who enjoyed those? Raise your hand. Probably no one. But good news is, Assassin's Creed fans, is that if you have to do those dreaded tasks of following someone, which you will, the game has been more forgiving. If you lose them, then the quest will then turn into kind of a finding quest. You then have to find that person that you were meant to be following, and you have to scan the area and use your eagle vision and all that kind of stuff. If the person who you're following turns around and sees you, the quest will then turn into a chase mission and you'll have to chase them down and get them. This means no unfair desynchronizations anymore with these feeble and annoying tasks. Which I think is fantastic because when you have to eavesdrop on someone and you eavesdropped on them for quite a way and then they turn around at the last minute, you're like, no, and have to do the whole thing again. This time, they turn around and you're like, oh, now I've just got to chase them for a bit, but at least I won't get desynchronized. Missions will also now be rated in a difficulty level from 1 to 5, because your assassin gets leveled up as you go and might not be a high enough level for certain missions, so you have to wait until you're high enough level to actually complete certain missions. Wait, did I just say your assassin can get leveled up? Yes, I did. Ubisoft has given us customization and the chance to level up our assassin into a way that we want them to turn into so they've given us more creative input into the game itself. So what does this creative input that we've put into actually amount to? It amounts to this, not only can we change our assassin's clothes into any colour we want to, you know we can choose any colour style, we can also choose what Arno wears. And depending on what outfits we pick up, aka 
torso, legs, boots, whatever, they all have different stats on them and we can mix and match these stats until we get the assassin that we want. And as for leveling up, we get these things called sync points which we get to put into three different pillars. Uh, we've got stealth, navigation and combat which we can upgrade which will affect what kind of assassin we want to be. Under these three main pillars we've got ranged, melee, stealth and health and you can level those up. Assassination quests in Unity have also been renamed and they are called black box quests. Now unlike before in the Assassin's Creed when they were like here is your mission you need to go and assassinate this man because he's not very nice he is over here you must kill him with the potions and you must do it in this time and not kill anybody else you know <laughs> we always had that kind of list of how to do it in this game you do not get any of that you get someone going hey you need to kill this guy you get a little red box on the map of where he might be and then it's up to you to go kill them in any way you want. So it's a bit like Hitman. You've got an assassination to take out and you've got to take it out in a way that you seem fit. And this adds into the whole customising our own experience within Assassin's Creed Unity and making it the game that we want to play in the style we want to play it in. Obviously the game developers have put in a list of certain things that if you fulfill in the quest you will get you know extra points so one quest uh, is shown in one of the developer playthroughs and it's shown many different ways that you can enter the cathedral but they say hey go kill this guy but wait you've got an eavesdropping opportunity here why not eavesdrop first find out a bit more about your target and then take him out oh yeah now we can take out our target in this way but instead of getting into the cathedral this way why not utilize the guards that you saw in the video before you actually started your quest oh yes i can take that key i can go into the cathedral that's a lot easier i haven't been you know seen yet and then you're like, oh yeah, that guy who I killed earlier, he said that he was going to meet him in the confession box. This is the perfect place to take on an assassination. So it's kind of those little things. You can take on the quest any way you want to, but the game devs have still added in that kind of small list. It's kind of hint like, hey, you could do this if you wanted to. But obviously if you've gone in as a combat style and you're just like, no way am I eavesdropping on anybody. Then just go in there and hack and slash, really. Well, hack and slash in an assassin way, which is quite artistic, I guess. But that is the new assassination quests. We've got black box quests instead, so let's have some fun with that. It means that every assassination will be different for each kind of player's progressional tree. Now, things that are still present in the game. Lifts are still present. You can still do the leap of faith as well and eagle vision is still present things that are kind of new uh, you can pick locks now so if you have the lock picking skill no door is locked to you so that's pretty cool they also have a new stealth mode so you can click a button and Arno will go into stealth mode and he'll be really light on his feet and no one will hear him coming Instead of the hidden blade, we also have the phantom blade, which looks awesome by the way. It is not only a blade that comes out, but it's also a mini crossbow. So you can shoot darts at people and send them to sleep from your hidden blade and then stab people in close quarters. Unity also has a landmass that is three times larger than Black Flag. Woo! So we've got a massive map here, guys, to explore. In terms of gear, which I was talking about earlier, Arno has 200 choices of different gear that you can put on, each with their own buffs. So that is a lot of customization here that Assassin's Creed devs have given us, which we haven't had before. Okay, this leads me on to the final segment of gameplay, which is the co-op. Now, you can have co-op with up to three of your friends, including yourselves, so that's basically four players, but you can play it with up to three of your friends. Uh, you can free roam in the city of Paris, you can do side quests together, you can do treasure hunts, which is where you just kind of go into the most unaccessible areas of Paris, 
and take people out and get brilliant rewards. Now, these missions in the co-op games are randomized every time, which means you always get a new experience every time you do the same quest, because the guards will have different patterns of movement, the loot will always be different, so this means loads and loads of hours of multiplayer fun, because the missions will never get stale, there's always a different approach you can take to each task. Um, everyone plays as Arno in the game, uh, you'll just see them as someone else when you play with them, so you'll think you're Arno, they'll think they're Arno, but when you're looking at them they won't be Arno. It'd be kind of like the uh, Watch Dogs multiplayer, and still show off that part <laughs> of Assassin's Creed Unity. Now what is my little rating so far of what I know about Assassin's Creed Unity? How excited am I to play this game? Well, I'm telling you that when it comes out, I'll be picking this game up because, if you've noticed from my t-shirt, I'm a long-standing fan of this franchise. And I feel like with Unity, Ubisoft is actually tried. They've tried to make it better. You know, the previous games have kind of been following the same trend. You know, since Ezio came on the table, he really kind of made a game that was so solid in its gameplay foundations that you could just keep reusing them, but by the time it got to Assassin's Creed 3, we're getting a bit bored, and the story was kind of bad. But then Black Flag came, and it was like on the sea in a boat, and that was awesome, but other than that, there wasn't any new gameplay. Whereas I feel like in Unity, they have implemented, you know, small but brilliant new features. So, and also, <laughs> it looks phenomenal. The graphics are amazing. Notre Dame is just perfect. You know, the developers are French, and I know I keep saying that, but when you're talking about your own country's history, you make that more of an effort, and I feel like they have. So I feel like Unity could be the Assassin's Creed game that everyone goes, yeah, that was my favorite. <laughs> so, will I be picking this up? Certainly. Am I excited? Very. That recent teaser with the world collapsing made me go, oh my god, what could be happening in the story? So what am I going to give Assassin's Creed Unity? I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. I really want to pick up this game on release, and I probably will because it looks great. But why have I only given it a 9? I've only given it a 9 because it will probably mean I have to upgrade my computer to play it because the specs for this game are insane. I have to upgrade again. So that's just me being a bit whiny with Assassin's Creed Unity for being so damn awesome. So <laughs> I'm giving it a 9 for that reason. I've also given it a 9 because Unity did not tick some of the boxes I really wanted it to tick. Why haven't we had an awesome female assassin yet? You know, we had Aveline, but that was kind of a PlayStation Vita game. And, you know, we didn't really... She wasn't a main assassin. And then, you know, we've got this... Uh, female assassin in the season pass which not everyone will experience because it's in the season pass and it's kind of like a platform and it's not a real fully fledged assassin's game but I'm not really gonna say anymore and I've only knocked off one point for it because I still love the game and this is all I have to say now about the matter either way guys let me know if you're picking up this game on November 11th Please comment, like, and subscribe. Share the video if you thought it was informative and you enjoyed it. So, hope you gamers are having fun out there and enjoy Assassin's Creed when it comes out.